to the Worst Team Training Weekly Show. I'm Brandon Dempsey. It is so great to have you. How are you guys today? Man, I hope you guys are doing great. It's great to see you. Hey, thanks so much for coming in. You made it through Sunday. You're actually alive, and you're here to tell about it. Sheila Cox, what's up? Matt Lockwood, what's up? All great friends coming in right now. Periscope, man, you guys are so sweet, so sweet. Thanks so much. Glad that you guys are here, and we have Wanda Floyd right here. I want to talk about Wanda just a little bit because, man, she is a firecracker. She's right here ready in the hot seat, ready to go. And, man, we are so glad that you guys are here because we got some great stuff happening. Sheila, what's up? Great friends coming in on Periscope and Facebook Live. If you guys would, please swipe and invite. Let everybody know what is to happen and what's going on so we can get this party started. Can we? My name is Brandon Dempsey, and I am a follower of Jesus and CEO of WorshipTeamTraining.com and also Worship Team Training University. You can find us at WTTU.co. And what is this? Well, we do live interactive training that comes to you at your church, whether it be workshops or mentoring or, as I said, the university program. You can find everything there at WorshipTeamTraining.com. Check it out. You're watching right here every week on Tuesday at 11 a.m. for worship pastors, leaders, musicians, singers, pastors, audio tech. We do shows like this to talk about the real deal and what's happening in your worship ministry. And this week, we are talking about listening to God and what does it mean to draw near to God? What does it mean to listen to Him? Not just the things that we say and do, but all about the things that God says and what He does. So thanks so much for joining us. Wanda, we have this. We have Wanda today, and check this out later on this week, actually tomorrow. You can't miss this. We're going to have Matt McCoy back from Loop Community. Now, if you remember, we have Matt McCoy. Sometime this past fall, Matt is one of, uh, he's actually the head guy over at Loop Community, making all fantastic loops for worship teams and churches. He's going to be here tomorrow at 12 p.m. live, right here on the same Facebook channel, not on Periscope, Facebook Live only. And he's going to be taking us through some tracks. Actually, I want to be taking you through some tracks with guitar and with piano to give you a little bit of more demo of what the tracks can do. Matt's going to help guide our time, so it's going to be really incredible. So be sure to check it out tomorrow at 12 p.m. right here. And this Thursday, coming up, we have Paul Pastor, the author of the book, the Listening Day. Paul has become a great friend of mine over this past year, and it's fantastic to have him share his heart. You're really just going to fall in love with this writing, so don't miss it. Also, coming up on December the 7th, we got Stephen Miller on the program on next Thursday. So that is going to be fantastic. And if you want to see more shows, go to WTTU.co. That is our university site. And if you go there today, you can actually get 50% off of our membership grand opening special extended Black Friday. So make sure that you check that out, WTTU.co, and get a membership today. Let's go to Wanda Floyd. Wanda is from a lovely Sacramento, California. She began leading worship in 2008, small church, and just two weeks ago, you didn't know that I knew all this, did you, Wanda? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, she was installed as pastor of worship at her church, and the church is... Church of the Sovereign God over there in Sacramento, California. Everybody, please welcome Wanda Floyd. Wanda, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Oh, great. It's so fantastic to have you and to finally meet you. Yes, yes, yes. It's amazing. So happy to meet you today. Well, it is, it's a blessing to have you. Now, we met back over um, on Instagram more than a year ago, but, but you said you actually were following us on Periscope, on the Periscope shows that we were doing yes. a year ago as well. Yes, I so, was, and always enjoyed the shows and wow. being able to be interactive and you answer questions and all that. That was amazing. Wow. Well, you're amazing. And uh, hey, this is simple, guys. So you participate, you interact, you wind up being where Wanda is. We'd love to have you also for an interview. And never would have known, Wanda, that you know all this time goes by and here you are. And it's fantastic because, I mean, God's done some incredible things in your church, incredible mm -hmm. things in your ministry. You just became worship pastor of your church. Tell us about it. Uh, it's an awesome ministry, um, an awesome responsibility as well. I just started off um, being a part of the praise team. I've been at my church four years and left a smaller church and went to my, my new church, Church of the Sovereign God. I was there four years and thought that I was just going to be a lay member and sit in the pews and 
worship like everybody else. You know, I was going to get a break finally. Yeah. Uh, but you know, <laughs> when worship is on the inside of you, there's nothing you can do to keep that from coming out. And right. started on the praise team and um, the person in charge needed to, you know, step away for a minute. So my pastor gave me that um, position to be his assistant. Hmm. And I did that and started doing some teaching um, because you need more than just singing. Um, right. Praise team need more than just singing. They need um, some application. They need um, some teaching. There's so much for us to learn about the responsibility of being um, a praise team or a worship leader. And so started doing some teaching, um, sought you out for some information to um, give them. And I was faithful in that position. And just two weeks ago, my pastor elevated the person that was in charge and then elevated me to be over the worship teams. And Man. it's an awesome responsibility. That's an awesome honor too. Awesome. Yes. Now, yes. now tell us also um, another uh, sheer insight of what you do. Sheer insight. You know, get it? Come on. Come on. Sheer <laughs> I'm losing it here. <laughs> what else do you, what else do you do? You do not only worship leading, but I'm a hairstylist. I'm awesome. a mom, and um, I'm also putting together a business conference for my industry for next year. That's I'm fantastic. A, a student, a business um, administration, going after my BA. So I got wow. A lot of things going on. Congratulations! <laughs> that is that is a lot going on. That is so I cool. I got a lot going on. Yeah. So what, um, let's talk about worship. Let's talk about uh, church. I mean, like you, you grew up singing, right? So you've done music. You've sung all your life. Yes. yes. <laughs> I grew up singing. Um, love music. All types of music. Anything that has to do with music, I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, as a little girl, uh, my mom and dad allowed me to go to church, and I joined the choir and I remember, I always tell this story, I remember we got to audition for a little uh, song. I had to be like maybe eight or nine. And they gave it to another girl and I got oh, mad. Man. <laughs> <laughs> they gave, I, I felt that that solo was for me, but they gave it away. But yes, always have been singing, grew up singing, got into the theater in um, junior high school, throughout high school. Yeah. Um and yeah, singing has always been a part of my life. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And another friend uh, that's been singing also for a lot, a lot of her years of her life, that you mentioned to me. I had no idea who's on your team. I wanted to say what's up to Angela Rogers. Yay! Yay. Hi, and, Angela. <laughs> and Angela, I, uh, Angela has become a member of our university program, and also one that's been following us all over Bible.com as well. Um, so I want to hear more from you. I want to hear more about uh, your church, um, your worship, because this week we've been talking about the whole reality of what does it mean as a worship leader, worshiper, as we come out of Thanksgiving, what does it mean mm -hmm. to extend that spirit of thanksgivingness, if you will, and, and the way that we listen to God in worship. Uh, so let me just ask, uh, you know, we're, we're walking from Thanksgiving into Christmas. What is that like for you, Wanda, as a worship leader? What does it mean to be thankful? Oh, my goodness. Uh, thankful, honestly, isn't just when things are going well. Hmm. A true worshiper um, knows how, even if they don't feel like it, knows how to be thankful and grateful in every situation. Paul talks about being content in every situation of our lives. And that's really what is required of a worship leader. That's how a worshiper is birthed out of our brokenness. Yeah. And yeah. so honestly, I have had some serious times in my life, um, which has made me the worshiper as I am. Mm -hmm. I believe as a little girl, I was a worshiper, but my trials and tribulations and situations have birthed the true worshiper that I yeah. am. And so you learn to be thankful. Right in the worst of times, that's in disastrous right. times. That's um, the true art of being thanks, being thankful, not just when things are going well, but when things aren't going well, because that's when you can see the hand of God. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you do to encourage your team about being thankful? 
Uh, it's a it's a daily practice, you know. Um, in order to uh, motivate that, that comes from your your personal time with God. Uh, I teach them to, and our church does. Um, it's your personal life that's really your worship. You can't call yourself a worship leader if you spend no time in worship hmm. throughout the week. Hmm. And that's a part of worship, you know, telling God, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, you know, I love you hmm. for who you are, not for what you do, but hmm. because of who you are. That's what I'm thankful hmm. for. I'm thankful that you are my peace. I'm thankful that you are my joy. I'm thankful that you have long suffering, that you, you enable me to um, be a long sufferer. You know, that's what, you know, I encourage them to do. Spend your quality time with God. And then your quality time and your time alone, that's when you learn to be grateful and thankful. I love that. Wanda, love thanks. Wanda. Um, I, I just had a flash of uh, William McDowell just thinking about uh, – one of his albums, uh, because of who you are, it's something. I think it's the title is close to that, and uh, mm -hmm. that song just remind what you said just reminded me of that song. Um, tell us also, you know, we talk a lot about how you know we put worship and music together all at the same time, but does worship only happen with music? No. <laughs> what's that no. like? What's that like for you personally? Um, because. Your, your time alone is different than the time when we come to church. When you come to church, you can add all the music and the sounds with it. Mm. But a genuine experience of worship at home, honestly, honestly, I've heard heavenly music. I, I honestly mm. have. And there are no musicians in the room. There's no musicians with me in my closet and I had to kind of stop sometime and turn around and look, wait, because I can hear music. Hmm. And so I honestly believe when you tap into God's presence, you will be able to hear what he hears, what goes on in heaven. I'm, I strongly believe that. Hmm. And I believe a lot of times that's where we get the melodies that we get here on earth because we've had that real experience in his presence where we're able to hear what he wants us to hear. Hmm. So take us through, uh, personally, what does it mean for you to tune out? Like you, you talked about, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, learning how to be in tune with God. What do you do personally in the toughest days, in the toughest times to present yourself to God? Ooh, just cry out to him. One thing I love about God is that there's no order. Hmm. There are no fine, fancy words that you have to say to get his attention. Um, you can just go to God as you are. And in my toughest times, hmm. I just had to stop. And a lot of times, not because I want to, but because the situation has broken me down so that all I can do is go to God and cry out about it. And even if I'm going to him to complain or ask why, before I'm finished, a true worship has come from that, where um, I forget all about what I'm going through. And now I'm focused more on loving him and his love for me. Yeah. And so what that looks like is just me, you know, taking the time. Okay, I need a moment. Rather, it's in my car. Rather, I have to stop at work and go to the, re excuse myself and go to the restroom. Rather, it's taking a walk and looking at the beauty in the trees and listening to the birds sing or looking at something as crazy as an ant and look at the simplicity and the beauty in the ant hmm. to give God his glory. And a lot of times when we begin to worship, we forget about everything else that's going on and it makes, makes going through it so much easier. That's what worship will do. Wow. Wow. What is it that you do to listen to God, even at the times when everything else is pandering for your attention. And this could even be like 
in the moment of when you're going to lead worship. And there's so much noise. There's so much of the hustle to get things done. What do you do personally in that moment? I just pray. I just pray and I listen for his voice. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So that lets me know that he's always talking and a lot of times we don't listen. And one of the things that I have um, taught our worship team is that you can have set music planned. You can have, we've gone through the rehearsals. This is what God has given us to sing. This is what we're going to do Sunday morning. But when we come together and we pray and seek his, his face and we're listening for his voice because the thing is, these are his people. He knows their needs. He knows what they need and he knows what he wants to say to them. He knows what he wants sung. And so even before worship, we come together as a team. Rather, one person is leading or the team is leading. We come together as a team and we pray and we listen for his instructions. And one of the things that I tell him, because we are a church that's based on worship, worship is the, um, the foundation of our church. Even if you get up there and he still hasn't said anything yet, or you think the songs are per they're perfect, make sure that you're still listening, that you're still listening to him because he might say, I don't want you to sing anything. I just want mm. them to adore me. I just want mm. them to glorify me. I want them to bow before me. So it's, it's important that your prayer life is in order. Mm. To be a worship leader, your prayer life is prevalent. You, you must have a prayer life because that's how you can hear from God. If you your prayer life isn't strong, then a lot of times we're leading in flesh because mm -hmm. it's what we want to do. It's what we want to sing. But have we stopped even on Sunday morning to ask him, is this still what you want? Is this still what your people need? Is this still what they want, what they need to hear? And then God, what do you want to say to them? You know, and so I also tell my um, my praise team to make sure that this is where you're supposed to be. Make sure you're called to be a praise leader, a praise and worship leader. Mm -hmm. um, it's important because we carry the ark mm -hmm. every every not even on Sunday. Our lives we carry the spirit of God. So it's important that you are in place. Love it. Um, let's get a little personal here. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So tell us about this. As a leader, what is your personal struggle? Uh, balancing everything. Okay. Talk about it. Yeah. What's balancing the struggle? Balancing everything. Um, so we talked about having a prayer life and, and all of this. And so here's, here's my, the, the, how my day goes. Uh, you got Monday through Saturday. Mondays and Tuesdays are set aside for teaching in my industry, training, also school. Then Wednesday through Saturday is for my business, my salon. Um, and so within that day, you still, I'm still a mom, you know, still have to, I'm developing a business conference. And so I still have all of these things that are going on throughout the day. And so the balance is the if you're not careful before the the day ends, it's over. You're getting ready to go to bed and you haven't spent any time with God. Mm -hmm. And so that was a struggle for me. Um, and I would feel so guilty because next thing you know, it's Sunday again mm -hmm. and you have to be before God's people. And here comes let's back up. It's Saturday at the end of my day, and it's like, oh, man, the week has been so busy other than just, like, reading, you know, my word and, you know, reading some spiritual quotes and listen to, listening to some, you know, spiritual music. I haven't taken that time to steal away and spend the time with God that I need to. 
because that's something that needs to be done daily. And so that was my biggest struggle. And so I had to learn how to carve out that time. Rather, it's early in the morning. Some people do good early in the morning. I don't. I had to learn how to carve out that time so that he can get to know me and I could get to know him. Awesome. So that that's how you overcome. That's that's how you're overcoming that struggle. What have you what have you learned along the way? Organization skills, um, <laughs> organizing it, uh, fighting my will. You yeah, know, yeah. fighting my will. Like it yeah. says, daily we have to die, and daily, yeah. you know, I don't always want to go and steal away. You know, because there's so many other things that I need to do. Or simply, honestly, I'm just tired. After being a hairstylist, I've been on my feet all day. And then I got to yeah. come home. Kids right. are pulling at me. You know, I might have some homework to do. And I just want to take a bath and go to bed. <laughs> That's what my flesh <laughs> wants to do. But God is like, yeah. no, little girl, come sit with me. I, I need to talk with you. I, I need to share some things with you. And here's the thing, not every time I need to be saying anything. Sometimes I just need to sit there and listen. We're talking about listening and hearing his voice. Sometimes I just need to sit there and listen to him. Sometimes he just wants to hold me and love me because I've been so busy and because I'm tired. I've fallen asleep in his presence, hmm. you know. And you wake up so refreshed. So, yes, how I fight that is to honestly fight my will and make myself go do it. Mm -hmm. Am I successful every time? No. No, I'm not. Yeah. But I'm learning that. Here's the thing. If I don't, I see the evidence of not spending time with that. I see the evidence of it. So it's crucial that I take the time and spend with him. It's crucial. So can you commit, Wanda, to the things that you learn? Because even after today, we all fall into that pit of, you know, we've, we've said these things about ourselves and then now comes the, the trial part. Can you commit to, when, as you work through that, to then bring that fruit to your team on Sunday? Almost oh, definitely. I have to. I have to lead by example. I can't tell them to do something that I'm not doing, hmm. you know, um, and it will be evident. Like I said, it definitely will be evident. It'll be evident on Sunday morning. They don't have to see you all through the week. It will be evident on Sunday morning, rather you've spent your time with God. Hmm. Amen. And then plus the, the church sees that as well. Yes. And it becomes evident to the church that you're leading them because you're being led. Yes. Yes, yes. Love that. Yes. Wanda, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and sharing with us about your ministry, what God's doing, how he's called you to listen, and the things that you're doing right now to have God grow your heart to listen to him more. And, and thank you very much for sharing that with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. It was an honor. It is definitely an honor, and I'm glad that we got you here and, uh, you know, after all this time, so it's just wonderful to have you. Thank you. You bet. And, guys, we thank you guys for joining us today. And we hope that this broadcast encouraged you because this is something that, you know, as we talk about listening, uh, Brandy, thanks so much for your comments. And Rossi, thanks for your comments on Facebook Live. Uh, you know, these are important things that we are sharing because it does greatly impact the people that we lead and worship not just our team, but those in church. And how are we being the church to them? How are we working through our own stuff, even when we feel like we don't want to? We talked a lot about that last week. And I talked about that this past Monday in our Bible studies that we have in our membership, pro in our membership program, uh, the, the difference between uh, feeling and knowing. And so for you as a worshiper, as a worship leader, we encourage, I encourage you to... Do the thing, which is to do what you know, uh, not based upon what you feel, and to hear God's call, to hear his voice, to listen. And this is where we come in to help you. You can check out what we have at our university program, which is wttu.co. 
We have devotionals, more articles and content like this. If you want to take it a step further, we have mentoring. And this is where we walk with you once a week. And it would be just like the way that Wanda and I are meeting here, but of course not thousands of people watching, but it's just you and I, or if it's myself and um, Bruce Kirkpatrick, maybe you meet with Laura Marriott. We have others that you can choose from at worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring. So take that extra step. We have many viewers right now that have gone through our mentoring program. We have those that have also gone through our workshops because this is the backbone of who Worship Team Training is. It's about coming alongside you and helping you in those areas to become more confident through the scriptures and more skilled in the gifting that God has given you. So check this out this coming tomorrow, Wednesday. Don't miss this at 12 p.m. You're going to love Matt McCoy and Loop Community at 12 p.m. Central. He's going to be going through loops. I want to be going through music with you with a guitar, with keyboards. It's going to be a lot of fun. 12 p.m. tomorrow, Central Time. And also Thursday, the writer of the book, The Listening Day, Paul Pastor will be with us at 11 a.m. And if you want to see that, more events that we've already done, and also other guys that are coming, like Stephen Miller the following week, just go to wttu.co slash events. And you can find all this posted right here on Facebook, and also you can find it on our website. So, Wanda, again, thanks so much for being here. It's been a blessing. You. Thank you. All right, and awesome. Guys, it's been a blessing to have you as well. Join us this coming tomorrow at 12 p.m. and the rest of this week. We'll see you back here at worshipteentraining.com. Love you.